Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be making a pasta with a piquant sauce. And if you're wondering what a piquant sauce is, stay tuned and we'll show you. So we have our big pot of water coming to a boil there. The recipe calls for orecchioni pasta. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. But Antonio does say that you can use any large pasta shape and we have decided to go with the shell bows. So we'll be cooking that on the side there while we prepare our sauce. Okay, this should be fairly simple. Even I probably can't mess this up. <laughs> so we're just going to start by adding these ingredients into this machine here. And blend and it together. And hit the button. Yep, there yep. you go. So we are going to start with sun-dried tomatoes, which is behind you there. So we have sun-dried tomatoes. Okay, so that Let is... The camera see it. There we go. And that is 100 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. Now, this is not sun-dried tomatoes in olive oil. The recipe does specify to just use the dried tomatoes and to rehydrate them for, for an hour and a half before you use them and then drain them. Which we did. Having said that, I'm sure if all you can find is tomatoes in olive oil, you could probably make that work. Next we have four anchovy fillets. Which are here, and we'll go ahead and do the very complicated step of dumping it in. <laughs> so we did um, soak those for about 30 minutes as well and then dry them on a paper towel. If you see any large bones, you can remove those, but generally they don't actually have large bones. Then we're going to be adding three tablespoons, or actually two tablespoons, of coarsely chopped basil. So we have three tablespoons in that little container there, so we're only going to use two-thirds. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so there's that. We'll set that aside for now. As well as two tablespoons of coarsely chopped parsley. Now it does say flat leaf parsley. Unfortunately, we could only find the curly parsley today, so it'll have to do. Okay, there's that, and we'll set that aside for now. Okay, to that we are going to be adding 10 grams or a quarter ounce of capers that have been drained. Okay, and there's the capers, and again, my skill level. Okay, and then to that we are adding two um, cloves of garlic. We just crush ours through a garlic crusher. Go ahead and get that in there. And then one small chili pepper that we chopped up. Um, it doesn't specify to chop it up, but we did just to make it a little, spread it out a little bit more evenly. I'm gonna give it a bit of a kick. Next, we'll be adding some olives, and those are pitted black olives. Um, just for the record, I protest this step, but we're gonna go ahead and put he them in there anyway. Does not enjoy olives. I'm not an olive guy, but we will give it a chance. I'm a huge olive person, so. <laughs> so I'm she excited. Might, she might be doing the taste test on her own. I, I'm happy to do that. And it's just so we know that was 25 grams or one ounce of the pitted black olives. And then finally we have some olive oil there, extra virgin olive oil. Would Antonio use anything else? Nope. Okay, and so that is that. six tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're just going to put our lid on there and blend it. <coughs> And the recipe says to blend it until the mixture is smooth and glossy. So it might get a little bit noisy here. Okay, and so now the fun part. Um, also a very high level of skill, you do this. We did start to blend it, and then we realized we did forget a step. And that is adding one and a half cups of water. Yeah, that is 300 milliliters of water. So luckily we can just pour that in. Which might make the process a little easier. And start that again. And it means I get to hit the, bu hit the button again. Okay. So, here we go. Oh. Much better. Okay, so we're just cut, um, we're checking the consistency of our sauce there. Um, I wouldn't exactly call it glossy, but it's definitely Close. smooth. Yeah, not the prettiest sauce. Yeah, but we still have to cook it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add our sauce to our skillet and let that simmer. So let me just get some of this stuff off here. Yeah, and we ended up uh, blending that for about three minutes. There's enough on there that's worth salvaging. I don't think we'd want to waste that much. So we're just going to gently simmer that um, until the pasta is done cooking. And the recipe does say to add a little bit of extra water if it's getting too thick. So Which we may or may not have to do at this point, I don't know. 
But I will say this, I don't see any chunks in there. It looks like it, it blended together very smoothly. Yeah, nice smooth sauce. Um, and again, once we add the pasta, you can always reserve a little of the pasta water and add that towards the end if you feel like it's too thick. Okay, that's starting to simmer nicely. And pretty much everything in there is cooked, so we're really just heating it through. I don't know, I'm going to take some extra advice. What do you think? Do you think this needs a little water, or do you think it's kind of thick or thin? Um, maybe a touch, and I mean just a touch. I'm almost thinking maybe just a touch of water. Yeah, because like I said, I would rather add a little bit less now and then add a little pasta water at the end, instead of making it I too mean, soupy. I guess it depends. It, just, it, acts, it seems like it's just slightly on the thick side. Yeah, maybe. it's a little thick, and that's our timer for our pasta. Okay, we are just going to add just a touch of water, not, not a lot. I'm not really going to measure, I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have our pasta ready there. That was 350 grams or 12 ounces of dried pasta. So, we're going to go ahead and add our pasta to the sauce. Okay, so before we mix that together, we're going to add our pecorino cheese. And we finely grated the pecorino cheese, and that was... 50 grams or 2 ounces of cheese. Go ahead and add that into where we just stir it all together. And then we're going to go ahead and plate that up with a little bit of the remaining parsley and basil as a garnish. And maybe a little bit of extra pecorino cheese and then we'll do the taste test. Mm. It does look very inviting. Mm, mamma mia! Okay, I'm going to let her go first. I'm a little bit skeptical of the olives and the anchovy combination, and I don't like olives. And he doesn't like anchovies. But, I can't trust her, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what this tastes like. So personally, I cannot really taste the olives or the anchovies separately. It's a, it's a pretty good sauce. Okay, well I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot, and if I don't like it, I will tell you. I definitely feel a little bit of the heat from the chili. Okay. Hmm. So, let me take a shot at this. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I can definitely I can definitely feel a kick from the chili. This is not my favorite one that we've ever done. That being said, I will eat this. This isn't bad at all. The combination somehow some way works and it works well. It doesn't work for you. <laughs> I'm happy to take it. <laughs> she loves it, but then again, in all honesty, I do not like olives. You mm. can't really taste them. Mm. Mm. Slightly, but they really blend in so well. They blend in well. Trust me on this. If I did not like it, I wouldn't take another bite, and I am. Oh, he wouldn't. Mm, I would not. <laughs> this is not like a sun-dried tomato that's in your face. Um, some of them can kind of really mm. be overpowering in some dishes. This is not the case in this dish. And um, if you try this at home, let us know what you think. And then until next time, we're saying goodbye. Goodbye, and I hope you give it a shot. <laughs>